Hello everybody, you Lotor for Life here, bringing you guys another anime archetype overview um, discussion thingy. Um, basically, okay, so if you guys don't remember, I did one of these uh, about a month or two ago. I can't remember exactly how long ago. And it was the Darkness Archetype. I went over to Darkness Archetype because uh, uh, there was those rumors going around that, oh, hey, we might be getting a uh, Darkness Archetype printed. I was really hoping so, but that turned out to be false. But hey, Dragon's of Legend 2, so hopefully, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, so. This time around, we are talking about the Ori Kalgos archetype. This archetype was designed by Konami in the anime to be unbeatable. The reason why they did this is because they figured that the only way for Yugi to actually have a challenge in a duel was for a deck to be designed through and through to be unbeatable in any way possible. Now, of course, as we all know, Kon uh, not Konami, <laughs> of course, as we all know, Yugi did win, um, but barely. <laughs> and we're actually getting those cards that he and his uh, friends, Kaiba, and, well, I guess Kaiba's not really a friend, but um, basically him, Kaiba, and Zoe used in the duel. Uh, of course, it, well, you know, you guys know the story by now. Anyway, so guys, we're going to be going over to the archetype. Uh, sadly, there are no traps for the Urukakos archetype, which surprises me, but hey, whatever. Also, I can't help but feel like we're missing some cards. I've gone onto the Wikia, I've gone onto YGO Pro, I've gone everywhere. I still feel like I'm missing some cards out of this, so please let me know if you guys know of any more Ori Kalkos cards that I just cannot find. Also, the reason why we're doing this on YGO Pro, not the Wikia like last time, is because for some reason the Wikia does not have the effects of Deuteros or Tritos. Uh, listed. They have the Japanese version, but I can't read Japanese, so... <laughs> Anyways, guys, so we're going to start off with the monsters and work our way around. And this here is kind of like their boss monster. It's called the Defined Serpent. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except with Orikaku Sunoros. When this card is summoned, pay all of your life points and send all cards in your hand to the graveyard. While you control this face of card, you cannot lose a duel. This card cannot declare an attack unless you send the top 10 cards of your deck to the graveyard. And even though it says 999999, it actually has infinite power. So that means no monster can destroy it in battle, no monster can collide with it, and the only way for it to be killed in battle is for uh, another monster of infinite power to attack it. Um, and actually, that's how. Uh, Yugi won, he summoned out this thing called Night of Destiny, and we are actually getting that printed, by the way, which is cool, um, but he doesn't have infinite power, sadly, um, and, uh, but he had infinite power in the anime and collided them, and then he used his effect to break up into the other three knights and attack the game. Anyway, so, this thing is obviously OP, <laughs> okay, however, what's really nice about it is it can be affected by uh, spawn trap cards and stuff. So that is pretty nice. Of course, however, as we'll see later on, of course the deck that is designed to be unbeatable would have a way to protect this boss monster. And speaking of on how to actually get him out, here is Orikako Sunorus. Now, guys, we actually have this thing printed. It said whenever they printed him, they retold him as a normal monster uh, support card, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> anyway, so here's its effect. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except of Orikakos Kigotora, which is this dude over here. He's kind of creepy looking. Uh, this card's original attack is equal to the total amount of battle damage reduced to zero by the effect of Orikakos Kigotora. That summoned this card. After damage calculation, if this card battled an opponent's monster, it loses attack equal, it will, yeah, equal to either that attack, defense, wait, attack, position, monsters, attack, or that defense, position, monsters, defense. Depending on its battle position, when this card is destroyed, while well, its attack is zero and you have 1,000 or more life points, no, wait, no, 10,000 or more life points, special summon one Divine Serpent from your hand or deck. Now, as you can tell, this is extremely conditional to summon out Divine Serpent. He has to have zero attack, and you have to have more than 10,000 life points, which isn't really that easy to do unless like, you have taken no battle damage whatsoever or effect damage and you have some way of life point gaining. Of course this deck has that. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to say that. This deck has so much like synergy with each other, aside from this dude and this dude for some reason. Anyway, so, continuing on, we have Orikakos Malevolence. He looks like a dragon out of, made out of lava or something, but he's a fiend for some reason. Anyway, so he has 1500 attack, he's a level 4 light, uh, sorry, fire fiend. Once per turn, you can select one defense position monster your opponent controls and change it to face-up attack position. It, it's not bad, I and mean, he's got 
1500 attack, but uh, of course up against 2004 Kalkos out on the field. So yeah. Now here is the most annoying monster in the deck, and why can you easily go without taking any battle damage whatsoever. When this card is destroyed, you can special summon it immediately. While you control this face-up card, you must skip your draw phase. This card gains 500 attack times the number of times it was special summoned by its own effect during this duel. So that means your your opponent attacks over it, okay cool, he comes back, he's at 900. Your opponent attacks over it again, okay cool, he comes back, he's at 1400. And this repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats, and it just gets to a point where he gets to unbelievable amounts of attack power and you can just keep shoving him in defense and oh hey you attack your opponent in mirror forces okay cool he comes back with 500 more attack power this is just ridiculous <laughs> and honestly that whole skip your draw phase it's irrelevant for this deck honestly uh, and not really actually now i think about it. it doesn't have any draw power um but uh, with all that being said this thing is as ridiculous and really the only way for your opponent to get rid of it is to Use something like 101 or Castell or Compulse or Deep Prison or something. Of course, all of those did not exist back in the day whenever Yugi had to deal with this. <laughs> so yeah, you can kind of imagine that. And then we have Orikako's Q Tora. He's a light rock, level 3 for some reason. Um, this thing cannot be normal summoned or set. You can spell summon this card from your hand by paying 500 life points. While this card is face up on the field, all battle damage you take from battles involving monsters you control becomes zero. When this card is destroyed, you can spell summon one Orikakos Sonoros, one Orikakos Dexia, and one Orikakos Aristeros from your hand or deck. So in short, this thing is pretty good. You take no battle damage while he's on the field, and he gets a counter, and all that stuff, and eventually you get out this thing which summons this thing. Really good. Now, as for Dexia and Asterios, let's see what they do. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card cannot be special summoned except by a card Tora. When this card battles with your opponent's monster, the attack of this card becomes equal to either that attack or system monster's attack or its defense plus 300 until the end of the damage step. After damage calculation, one Orikako Sonoros you control loses attack equal to the attack uh, this card had during the damage step when Orikako Sonoros is removed from the field, destroy this card. And then Astros has the exact same effect. <laughs> so yeah, they have the exact same effect. And all they're really here for is to further lower his attack and defense so you can summon out this thing. So yeah. And also, I think they're his arms. Like, honestly, they kind of look like it. And then we have this thing, Orikako's Mirror. This thing can only be virtual summoned by using the uh, spell card Orikako's Mirror. Okay, they have the exact same name. Huh. When this card is virtual summoned, special summon... Four, Mirror Knight Tokens, Warrior Type, Dark, Level 1, 0 Attack, 0 Defense. Then place one Shield Counter on each, Max 1. Once per turn, you can place one Shield Counter on every Warrior Mirror Knight Token you control without a Shield Counter, Max 1. When a Mirror Knight Token with a Shield Counter battles an opponent's monster, its attack becomes equal to that monster's attack until the end of the damage step. If a Mirror Knight Token with a Shield Counter would be destroyed, remove the Shield Counter instead. And then, yeah, this is virtual summons him so yeah a really good card it swarms the field you get to basically summon a bunch of little pokers and everything and it gets really really annoying <laughs> and then we have the seal of Calcos. i'm not going to bother going over the real version of it or the uh, anime version of it because it's literally the same thing and of course we also know it's effect by now you cannot you can only activate one per turn per duel it gains all monsters you control gain 500 attack and your opponent cannot attack the weakest monster you control uh, also, it cannot be destroyed by card effects uh, once per turn, although the enemy effect just can't be destroyed at all, or negated, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, Deuteros gains all the effects of Orikalkos, um, you activate it by sending a face-up seal to the graveyard, uh, gains all the, yeah, and then you can gain 500 life points for each monster you control, and if an opponent's monster would uh, de declare a direct attack, you contribute one monster you control to destroy the attacking monster. I think this is more so to get rid of Giga so you can get back to your draw phase. <laughs> like, honestly. Uh, and then Tritos gains the effect of all of the Silver Calcos and Deuteros. And monsters you control are unaffected by your opponent's spell and trap cards. So that is just really, really ridiculous. And of course, it protects your Divine Serpent. So you have a big monster that cannot be destroyed by battle and is unaffected by all of your opponent's spell and trap cards. Now, of course, as you can see, if Konami were to print this deck, they would have to nerf 
pretty much everything. <laughs> like, honestly, they would have to nerf this deck, too. Uh, heck. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I don't curse, so. Uh, anyways, so, guys, um, I really do hope we could do get to see this archetype one of these days. I just hope it doesn't become something like Dragon Rulers at their prime again. <laughs> and I hope they do nerf them, but not nerf them to the point where we can't play it at all. I just don't want to see it running around at, like, this kind of power and being unbeatable unless we have Knight of Destiny and stuff. Anyways, guys, do you think Konami should print the rest of this archetype? Do you would you, would you like to see it printed? Do you think that they're a little short on cards? Because I feel like they are. <laughs> and do you like more of these videos? And of course, guys, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. And if you have any recommendations for whatever anime archetype I should go over next, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, tell me if you like this type of video, like talking about anime archetypes. And tell me, do you want to see uh, similar videos of this, but talking about real archetypes, like archetypes that were actually printed? So, guys, again, thank you all for watching. Please have a great day, and see you all next time, later. I don't know, I'm probably going to do another video today. <laughs> see you guys later.